Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my March 2020 manga haul. Um, I did actually pick up a hundred more volumes than what is in this video because I got a hundred volumes of manga for free from a friend of mine. So I made a separate video earlier in the month, um, in March, covering all that I got from that, uh, that friend in particular. But this is the stuff that I actually purchased this month because I knew I would have quite a bit of a haul. So I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, starting off with some continuation series. Uh, final volume of Devil's Line. This is volume 14. It is the extra stories. So technically the series ends at volume 13, which finished last year. Uh, but this 14th volume is extra stories. I did read this. It was okay. Um... Devil's Line, I really need to reread it so that I can read the entire series uh, in one go because a lot of the characters from this, I didn't really remember much about them. And then even reading Devil's Line ongoing as I was, as each volume came out, I could barely remember who everybody was. And so I really need to read the whole series again, like just all in one go so that I actually can get more of a handle on the story um, as a whole. Next up, another ongoing series, Ajin Demi Human Volume 14. This is another one that I always pre-order the volumes for. Uh, very good action series, quite uh, dark. It's about um, these humans that don't die. They reincarnate, or not reincarnate, they, they um, basically reanimate themselves every time they die. And uh, humanity is not very fond of these demi-humans, these Ajin, um, and so they do experiments on them and they kind of, uh, the world has made them out to be these evil beings, uh, when really most of them are just, they're, they're exactly like humans, they just don't die, and, um, or when they do die, they come back to life, and it's just a very interesting series, I'm not going to open up to see the art, because this is quite a ways into the series, and it's into a pretty full-on war at this point. Um, next up, I got the next few volumes of Honey and Clover. This is by Chika Umino. Um, I love Honey and Clover, and I'm very excited to have more. This is a 10-volume series. I only own volume one currently, so I went and purchased some more of the series. Uh, it's an older, I don't know why it's not focusing, um, older shoujo beat title about these art, an art college, and these college students who are basically just finding their way in life and, you know, experiencing love and, and unrequited love and um, friendships. And it's really, it's a slow burning series about these, these characters trying to find their way. And it's like, this is technically the main character here. And he's, I think, I don't know if he's a first year in college or maybe a second year, but I know there's a couple of them that are in their final year of college. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just really, really good. And I can't wait to read more of it. So that was volumes two through five. So I can at least read those now. Um, I have not read those ones yet, but I watched the anime years ago. So I know the story and everything. Next up, I got Yotsuba volume 10. I only own volume one. I have read this volume because Yotsuba is pretty much just the tiny child doing tiny child things. And I figured I can probably just read this and, and know what's going on anyway, which I did and I could. So I hope to get the rest of these. This is a Yen Press title. I hope to get the rest of these at some point. But for now, I have volume one and volume 10. I've read both of them and enjoyed them immensely. Um, I got this for very, very cheap, which is why I bought this particular volume because the other ones were still quite expensive. Next up, Again, I got these for like $4 each new. Uh, chapters, I'm in Canada, I purchased most of my manga from Chapters, was having a buy two get one free sale on manga for about three weeks in a row. And then I applied a 10% off coupon on everything and I ended up getting these for about $4 uh, each brand new Canadian, which is amazing. So I got 9, 10, and 14. I think that I own volume six and seven um, already, because those were the two volumes I liked the most back in the day. I have read quite a bit of this series from the library way back when, but, uh, have not 
completed reading it and, and don't own all of it yet. So it's one of the ones that I've had on my mind to try and complete um, and finish reading. But yeah, so slowly making my way towards that. Oh, I forgot I also have volume 15. Uh, yeah, so I got a few volumes now. I think one, two, three, four. So I have six in total, I guess. I think it's a 16 or 17 volume series or something. Um, but yeah, next up. Continuing on with Volume 5 of My Boy. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. This is the one about the 30-something-year-old woman who befriends a 12-year-old boy. Um, and it becomes... She's concerned about his well-being based on his presumed family situation. And she starts to get a little more involved in his life than she should. Uh, I quite enjoy it. Um, yeah. But I guess we're going to see where this ends up. Next up, another one that I have read. I think I only... I've been reading this from the library. Um, and I have not read... I might only have one volume left to read. But I can't remember. Kimi ni Todoke is a very good shoujo series. I think it's... Is it 30 volumes or 31? Um, in total, it is finished now. After many years, I only owned volume six. I bought it when it came out years ago, and um, because I really liked that volume and what happened in it. I used to buy manga only based on what happened in the volume after I read it from the library. If it was one I particularly liked the story in, I would purchase just that singular volume. Hence the couple volumes of Dangeki Daisy and the random volume six of Kimi ni Todoke. Uh, but now it's one that I am interested in picking up all of so I can reread it and it is one I really enjoy the side characters these are the two friends of the main character um, it's a big cast of friends and they all are kind of dating and mingling and uh, it's just a story about people like really good hearted people um, and it's you know it's a high school shoujo but it's got a lot of heart and it's got some of my favorite like Yano uh, Ayane is her first name I think um, is one of my favorite female characters and has been for many years I just really like her and uh, Chizuru the other friend as well is really really wonderful and the boys in this series are quite good as well um, it's just good people, and I, I really enjoy some fluffy shoujo with some solid characters. Um, and so I'm happy to have more of Kimi ni Todoke. So I got a bunch of random volumes, as you can probably tell. These were all really cheap. I got them for about 6 or $7 each. Um, so I was just purchasing based on which volumes were the cheapest at the time, because then I could get them even cheaper with the buy two, get one free, and the 10% off uh, as well. So... Yeah, another one I'm slowly but surely trying to complete. Next up, I got volume 9 of Al Har Ride. This is finishing up very soon. 13 volumes, I believe, uh, in total, which I think by the end of this year they should be done um, if things stay on schedule. But I enjoyed this volume, as I expected I would. I really like Al Har Ride, so uh, not a big surprise there. Next up, another couple random volumes. Volume 5 of Children of the Whales. Very beautiful cover here. I only own volumes 1 through 3, which I have read. I have a first impressions video on this series. It's not my favorite, but for some reason I can't get it off my mind. And so I got this volume for, I think, $6. Which in Canada, this volume is $17.99. So, uh, yeah, I decided to purchase this for seven dollars and brand new and so I will fill in the gaps when the volumes are cheap same with volume nine got it for very very cheap and um I think I might have got this one for five dollars but anyway uh yeah super cheap and figured that I might as well get them now and fill in the gaps later so yep same with uh volume 14 of Tokyo Ghoul Re. I think I only own up to volume 6 of Tokyo Ghoul Re. I was enjoying it, despite what everybody else seems to feel about it. Um, I'm enjoying it for what it is. I'm not comparing it to Tokyo Ghoul. 
and I'm just enjoying the art, I'm enjoying the battles, I'm enjoying the uh, the characters, and just kind of going from there. But this, again, I got for like six bucks, uh, so I couldn't pass that up since I already own quite a bit of this series. I figured eventually I will purchase the rest of it. Um, another continuation here, got Go With The Clouds, North by Northwest. This is volume two, I think. Um, yep, volume two. This is, I also got volume three, which is a beautiful cover. This is probably, I might say, one of my favorite ongoing series right now. I have a first impressions of the very first volume when it came out. Um, this is by the same mangaka Aki Irie that, did, that does Ron in the Grey World. I like this one so much better. I do enjoy Ron in the Grey World, but this one is amazing. It's set in Iceland, and a lot of people didn't like volume two because it kind of derailed the story. Uh, for this volume, but it gets back to things in volume three, and I honestly didn't mind the kind of derailment tourist, um, Iceland tourism that happened in volume two. It's just stunning. Like, it's really, really, really stunning uh, characters and landscapes and everything. Um, it's just, I'm really loving it. The characters, the mysterious story that seems to be happening and and um yeah m potentially one of my favorite ongoing series right now i'm just so enthralled with with how this is going and i cannot wait to see what happens next next up probably what i am most excited about i got my hands on volume four of saturn apartments this is a it's a little bit torn in the corner because uh, i got it it's a used library copy where is it there it is uh, I bought this off Amazon off a, uh, from a used bookstore in the States. I paid about $11 for it, which is great because Canadian, this is regularly retail $15. Um, this is one of the out-of-print volumes. I own everything now of Saturn Apartments 1 through 7 except Volume 3. I was missing 3 and 4, found Volume 4, got rid of all the library stickers, and the only concern is this little tear in the corner here, um, which I can live with. So I'm super stoked to have that. Next up, O Maidens in Your Savage Season, Volume 6, continues to be a wonderful read. 20th Century Boys, Volume, our Omnibus Perfect Edition, Volume 7. Um, I have read this volume uh, 20th Century Boys continues to be an amazing series. I've never read it before. Um, I don't think I have any more of this ordered or pre-ordered or anything, but I'm reading them as I buy them, as they come out. Um, really, really, really enjoying it. Next up, a couple random volumes of Doro Hidoro. We got volume 19 as well as volume 22. Uh, slowly but surely making my way through this series. I really love it. It's very dark and gritty and the fighting is amazing. The characters are awesome on both sides of what would be deemed as the good guys and bad guys. There really isn't clear lines. You know, we, we're looking from both sides. We get to see the characters on both sides and, and, um, the sorcerers as well as the, the humans that live in the hole and, yeah, I'm just excited to see where this series goes. I've only read up to volume 13, which is what I have uh, in order, and then I have these two random volumes, so hopefully I will get more and uh, be able to read a bit farther into it. Another random volume of Again. This is volume 4. I cannot read this series yet because I do not have volume 1. I think I have volume like 2, 4, 8, and 9 or something ridiculous. Um, but... Yeah, I'm excited to read this when I can read it, but at this point I cannot. Couple more volumes of Real. This is volume 2 and 13. Uh, I've read nine volumes of this from my library. This is a Takohiko, Takehiko Inoue series about wheelchair basketball that is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, I've read up to volume 9, so um, I think there's 14 that are currently out, it's on hiatus, but I've heard potentially that it's coming back. 
So I don't know if that's true or not, um, and if we'll see another volume in English at any point. But for now, there's 14 that you can get in English. Um, it's a phenomenal series. Um, and obviously, Takahiko Inoue's art is fantastic. There's lots of color pages in these. Um, really, really beautiful uh, story. Heartbreaking and, you know, but it's a sports manga with a lot of of heart and, and soul in it. And uh, you really, really, really fall in love with these characters, even though not a lot of them, not all of them are very likable people, but you still um, kind of... Uh, really feel for their situation and um you 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 know why they're behaving the way that they do and you get to see you know how they ended up in wheelchairs and and how they're kind of coping with that um next up got another volume of inuyasha in the viz big editions this is 11 um i don't have unfortunately there's a crease in the spine but um not a big enough deal for me to go and return it, especially now when I can't return it um, to the store because the stores are closed. But uh, volume 11, I have up to volume 9, I believe, so technically I can't read this one yet because I don't have volume 10. But it's another one I am slowly but surely collecting. Next up, some new to me series. Volume 1 of Master Keaton. This is Naoki Urasawa as well as Hokusei Katsushika and Takashi Nagasaki. This is a Viz uh, signature release. Uh, these are one and a half size volumes. This is based on the Kanzenban edition from Japan. Uh, so they're one and a half volumes worth. There's 12 of these uh, editions. For in English, which completes the series. This is an older, I believe it started serializing in the 80s, the late 80s, into the 90s, um, about an insurance, what does it call him? Um, insurance investigator. He's an archaeology professor as well, and an old, he used to be in the, um, in the army in some capacity. Uh, it's amazing. I heard, was it, Insidious Swede talked about this a year over a year ago, I think, on his channel, and I had always kind of wondered what Master Keaton was about, but never thought I had an interest until he made a video about it, and it's just one-off stories in, um, like, each chapter is a separate insurance uh, investigation, and he goes in, and he obviously investigates the insurance claim, um, and... It's a lot, there's a lot of murder, there's a lot of mystery, there's a lot of history, because he is a history archaeology professor. Um, a lot of, it doesn't take place mostly in Japan, a lot of it, some of it takes place in Japan, and then it's all over kind of Europe and everything. It's really interesting, I've read this first volume. I will definitely make a first impressions on this series. I also have volume two, uh, and I'm currently uh, reading it right now. So, and as you can see, there's these really cool maps on the volumes. And yeah, it's just really, really good. And uh, I'm surprised that not as many people have this or, or talk about it, but I definitely will make a first impressions on this at some point once I finish this volume. Then I've got Love Me, Love Me Not, another Ayo Saki Saka title. This is volume one. Really enjoyed it. I do have a first impressions of this coming out at some point. Blood on the Tracks, Shuzu Oshimi. This is a vertical title, new series. Um, I, have a, I have a first impressions of this coming out soon as well. It is already filmed and scheduled on my channel. I just don't remember when it's coming out. But this is a very dark series about a mother and her son. Her son is in middle school when the story actually takes place. Um, but it's an overprotective mother and quite creepy and eerie. And um, obviously Shuzu Oshimi art, pretty pretty wonderful, um, but very, very dark series. Uh, check out my video on it when it comes out if you're interested. Um, next up, Living Room Matsunaga-san Volume 1. Also have a first impressions of this. I think it is already out on my channel. Um, 
really, really enjoyed it. Check out my first impressions if you want to hear my thoughts on it, but basically this is another boarding house title. It is an age gap. He is a bit older than her, but he's not her teacher. He's not a tutor. He's not a family like friend or anything. He's literally just a guy that lives in the same house as her. Um, so besides the fact that there's an age difference, there is not much of a power dynamic in terms of her him being a certain part of her life uh, in any way other than the fact that they live in the same boarding house. Uh, but I really, really like it, and the art is quite... Uh, character designs are lovely, the characters are all very attractive, um, and I can't re wait to read more of this. Heavenly Delusion, Volume 1. This is a new Denpa title um, that I'm very excited about. It's like a sci-fi title about... Um, there's outsiders and insiders. The insiders live in this, like, kind of utopian society that's a bit creepy and eerie um, because it's so perfect and then uh, and it's some kind of like research facility or something I guess and then the outsiders are in this like desolate post-apocalyptic world I'm very interested to see where this goes I also have a first impressions on my channel of this I can't remember if it's out not already um my Androgynous Boyfriend. This is a Seven Seas release by Tameko. Um, this one is a uh, new romance Jose title about these adults, uh, which is nice. It's uh, this boy here is into androgynous fashion and lifestyle and whatnot, and it's about him and his girlfriend and just kind of their daily life and being cute. Also, first impressions of this coming out soon. Rose of Versailles. This is a Udon release, which I'm sure you've all heard about. This beautiful hardcover. Um, I do also, again, first impressions of this is coming out soon. I loved this. Absolutely loved it. Um, classic shoujo series. Very excited to have it. Beautiful, beautiful releases like photo paper. Um, lots of color pages in here uh, throughout. And... Um, Beautiful release. I have the next two, I think, pre-ordered already. There will be five of these. But if you're interested in kind of manga history in general um, and learning about uh, a very pivotal title, uh, I, would, I would definitely recommend checking out The Rose of Versailles. Next up, another very random volume, Love and Focus, uh, volume three. This is a three-volume series, so this is the final volume. I don't have one and two, but this was another one I got for like six dollars, brand new. So I have had my eye on this one because I love the art. Um, I think the characters are really cute looking, and so I cannot wait to get volume one and two to be able to read this, uh, but for now, just volume three. Uh, next up, also, random volumes, Honey So Sweet, another shoujo I've had my eye on for a while. Uh, I thought the art was cute. I think that the premise seems adorable. It's apparently this girl who's just sweet and cute, and this boy who has a scary face uh, confesses to her, but he actually turns out to be a really sweet guy. But everyone thinks he's kind of scary and, and delinquent-esque, um, and I guess they start dating. But I have volumes four five and six. I think it's an eight volume series if I remember correctly. I don't have any more of this, but again, these ones were super cheap and it's one I've had my eye on for a while, so I figured I might as well pick them up now and um, fill in the gaps later. Oops. And I've got volume two of Saint Young Men. This is a hardcover new release by Kodansha by the same author, um, Hikaru Nakamura, who does um, Arakawa Under the Bridge, which I really enjoy. Saint Young Men, I watched the anime. I think it's like a two episode, is it two episode OVA kind of series years ago? Uh, but this volume, these are like, how much is this? $31.99 Canadian, which is ridiculous um, for this, but I got this for $11, I think, so I bought this one. I will get volume one at some point. I don't know if I'm going to collect the whole series unless I can get it like a really good deal like this one because I just don't know that this is going to be worth the amount of money that's being charged for these. 
Uh, the paper quality does not feel much better. Actually, it kind of feels worse. Almost. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel, it feels like a regular manga volume paper quality. Uh, they just put a hard cover on it and it's definitely a glued spine and it's just not, it's very light. It's not, it doesn't feel good quality. It's just a hard cover and I'm disappointed with that. Um, so I'm not looking to spend that much money on something like this and I really wish it had just been a regular soft cover but anyway that's just me can't say much about the story though at this point because I've just watched the anime years ago and I don't have volume one to read it so I guess I'll have to wait till that happens next up I've got girls last tour a few random volumes volume four five and final volume six uh this is from what I understand, these two girls are in like this apocalyptic world where they just kind of drive around and look for civilization, food, anything, I guess. Um, apparently it's quite calming, quite uh, quiet, slow-paced slice of life. And yeah, the art's pretty gorgeous and the character designs are funny. Um, I need the first three, so yeah. At this point, this is what I have, but I am excited to have it. And this is a Yen Press release, and the author is Tsuku Mizu. So, yeah, I'm excited. This is one I've had my eye on for a while. Next up, I've got some new and completed. This one, technically, this first one, technically is not completed. This is the Cornered Mouse Dreams of Cheese, because there is a sequel series, um, The Carp on the Cho Chopping Block Jumps Twice. Uh, this is... Setona Mizushiro is the mangaka. This is a Seven Seas release. It is a BL title that is very messy. I read this and enjoyed it immensely. Uh, this guy is a private investigator. This guy's wife set this private investigator after him because she believed he's cheating on her. This guy happens to know him from college, I believe, and blackmails him into basically sleeping with him so he won't tell his wife he's been cheating on her. Um, and yeah, it's messy it's ridiculous but i i really loved it um it's so full of drama and i can't wait to read the sequel series or sequel volume to this then we've got liquor and cigarettes this is a sublime title wonderful i do have a video on my channel about this one um i don't know if it's out yet or not but if it isn't then hopefully you'll watch it when it is out uh really wonderful bl series it's set, I believe, in somewhere in South America. Really beautiful. Um, the characters are wonderful. The, the, the setting and the, the artwork is, is great. Um, and it's, yeah, about these two friends kind of exploring what it means to be more than friends. And uh, yeah, really wonderful. I, I quite enjoyed it. Next up, uh, fourth generation head. Tatsuyuki Oyamoto. This is Scarlet Berico, who did Jackass, which I really love. Um, this one is a Yakuza title. Um, quite messy, as you can probably tell just by the cover. Um, a lot of, like, kink kind of stuff in here, which Scarlet Berico seems to be a fan of. And, I mean, I enjoyed it. I think that Jealousy, which is coming out by her as well some point this year, I think I read that it's like a series that focuses on some of these characters as well, but I could be wrong about that, so don't quote me on that. Uh, this is Don't Call Me Dirty, another boys love title. This one's by Tokyo Pop. It's a newer Tokyo Pop release. Um, I have a video about this one as well coming out on my channel. Um, this one's about a homeless man and this out gay gentleman here. Um, and yeah, it was quite good. But check out my review of this one once it's out. Next, I've got The Wise Wise Beasts of the Wizarding Wisdoms by Nagabe. This is a bunch of short stories about all these, these creatures um, at a wizarding school. None of them are human, um, obviously, as you can tell. It's a bunch of boys love short stories. None of them are explicit, so don't worry about that. Uh, but it's very cute. Um, I do also have a video of this one coming out at some point soon as well. But I was quite happy to have this one because I love Nagabe's art. Maybe I'll 
throw that over here. Next up into the alternative manga, I got Cigarette Girl, which, as you can see, the, t the cover is quite textured, which is nice. This is Masahiko Matsumoto. Um, this is a... I do not know what this publisher is. Top Shelf, I guess. Top Shelf Productions. Uh, I've not read this one yet. It's an alternative title. Um, I'm excited to read it, though. Next up, The Man Without Talent. This is a Yoshiharu Suge title, which I'm super excited for. I've heard a lot about Yoshiharu Suge um, in a bunch of the other alternative manga that I've read. Uh, some of the essays in the back mention Yoshiharu Suge, so I'm very excited to read this. I have not read it yet, though. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an alternative title. And there's another title by him coming out called The Swamp, which I have also ordered, but it isn't out yet. So excited for that as well. Um, next up is A Single Match by Oji Suzuki. This is a drawn and quarterly title, a bunch of short stories. I do have a video of this one coming out. Um, but yeah, alternative titles again. Um, short stories, really, really good. Nice hardcover as well. And we've got The Boxman by Imiri Saka Sakabashira. Wow, that's okay. Um, another drawn and quarterly hardcover. That I really enjoyed. All of these, if I have read them, which I have read this, have a video coming out at some point um, about them. Next up, Red Snow by Susumu Katsumata. Yes, I have not read this one. This is another drawing quarterly hardcover. This is short stories as well, um, but I haven't read this one, so I don't really know what it's about. I basically went on chapters and purchased any and all alternative manga that I could find that I hadn't that I didn't already own um this one was from Amazon but this is a patch of dreams by Hideji Oda really really enjoyed this I do have a video about this one I don't know if it's out yet or not this one I actually purchased in February but this was the only volume I purchased in February of manga which was shocking um so I didn't want to do a haul of one volume so I threw it in here as well uh, this one's very good about a girl who's losing touch with what is reality and what is dreams and the art is fantastic um, But yeah, it's very different This is opponent mon uh, fanfare release And next up is the walking man the expanded edition by Jiro Taniguchi. This is another fanfare opponent mon release um, I did read this. I really enjoyed it. There is a review on my channel coming out about this one as well But yeah, really 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 enjoyed this title. It's the first Jiro Taniguchi title I've ever read um, Which is not great. I've always wanted to read a Jiro Taniguchi title and this is the only one I own um, Hoping to pick up more by him in the future because this is quite this was really really incredible and this release is really beautiful um, Oh opened up to some color pages, which are lovely but basically, as you can probably tell, it's about a man who goes for walks and exploring the world, and it's really nice. And final manga I picked up was Dementia 21 by Shintaro Kago. This is a fanographics release. Um, this one is a bit thinner than the first one. Uh, I've not read this one yet, but this is about the girl who works with seniors, and it's a bunch of ridiculous hijinks of shenanigans. Uh, Shintaro Kago does a lot of very bizarre, he mostly does like uh, erotic grotesque stuff, but this is more of a tame work of his, it's less sexual, more just bizarre. Excited to read it, um, but yeah, um, haven't gotten around to this one yet. And the final thing I picked up in the month of March, not manga, uh, but I did get the steelbook edition of Avatar, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the complete series. Um, I owned the DVDs, but uh, not season one because season one's DVDs, the quality is not very good. And so I had been wanting to purchase, um, the Blu-ray and then I never got around to purchasing the regular Blu-ray edition that came out a few years ago. And then when this was announced, I went, well, I better get the steel book. So this is book three, fire, book two, earth, and book one, water. Um, this basically just comes with the discs inside of it, just Blu-ray, no DVD uh, combo or anything, and then it comes with a little preview of the Kiyoshi uh, exclusive excerpt from the 
book, I guess, uh, which I don't really care about. Uh, unfortunately, no, like, episode guide leaflet or anything, which I think is a bit of ridiculousness because this is over, at least in Canada, it's over $100 for this. I paid about $70 or $80 or something, which still is a lot, but these are really beautiful, and they do connect this picture. It's hard to show you on this screen, but they do connect together. Um, very beautiful. Glad to have it now. I don't have to worry about purchasing this. This is a series I really love, and I did watch it all already. Uh, my sister and I binge-watched it when I purchased this. Um, but yeah, um, I'm. it's a lot of money to drop on this, so if you've, I wouldn't recommend this edition, the Steelbook edition, if you don't love this series. But, um, and if you already own it in the regular Blu-ray, because you're not going to get anything extra, the only extra you get is the fact that these are in Steelbooks, um, and you get this little excerpt from the novel, the Kiyoshi novel, which, go buy the novel if you really want to read it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I figured I'd show this off too, because it's quite lovely, and maybe someone's interested. But, yeah, anyway, that is everything I picked up in the month of March besides the hundred volumes I got from my friend for free, which you can check out that video again if you have not already. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of manga this month. There was a lot of sales on chapters that I could not resist. So, hopefully, hopefully things will calm down um, and I will not have this much in the near future. So, anyway, if you saw anything that you want to chat about with me in the comments, feel free. Um, let me know what you picked up this month, and thanks for watching. See ya.